good morning. Good to, to listen to you about the Hello. vacations and the summer. Mm -hmm. no. Around here is a little cold, but it's okay, it's nice, it's a good day. Jill, good morning. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? Hello. Shalom. Bon well, dia. <laughs> we I'm very doing good. good. We are very happy to hear you. Yeah. Yes. That, yes. That was a great bon dia. It's a perfect <laughs> pronunciation. <laughs> yes. My, uh, my, uh, my cousin, um, her name is Adriana. She's from uh, Rio or Rio. Oh. And so she tries to teach me. Um, I try to learn from her. <laughs> You have a nice pronunciation. It's, oh, it's native, almost native. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Thank you for joining us uh, for this beautiful session that Fernando prepared for us. Fernando will present to us today the story of Fernando. Hello, uh, About the 12 spies. Yes. <laughs> uh, because we we have been studying this story and it is so so deep and beautiful. The ideas that is the book of Soha and Luria brings to this about this episode and and it has so many layers it is so it will be very nice to listen to the friends about what uh, what it means and and from this this perspective of the sword of the secret and not only about an story that happened one day right yes but but that happens every day with us maybe yes that's a great opening shall we approach the whiteboard and see the text and the painting and see what is going on there yes Let's see, I'll try to to move here the text. One second, it glitched. One second, here. Here. Is it in the center? It is very good, oh. Fernando. <laughs> Just a little compliment because you, uh, how do you say, you position the text <coughs> face to face. Because usually <laughs> on, uh, yes, on Mechon Mamre, they put the, the text back to back. <coughs> The Hebrew is on the left and the English is on the right in a relation of back to back. And thank you for this beautiful initiation uh, to position <laughs> the text face to face. <laughs> it was, uh, it, I don't know it, it, I just put it, uh, it was unconscious. But <coughs> thank you for putting on the whiteboard it. And it's beautiful, this, this story, you know, it, because uh, you know, because of the, the the attitude of the twelve spies that that was the prince of Israel, they are powerful men and mm -hmm. and clarified men. It was not uh, uh, some somebody that didn't have a connection or they they were well wealthy men, let's say. Uh, but because of their attitude. A whole generation was uh, had had to to die in the desert, and because of that of this attitude, they stayed forty years in the desert. So it is a major story in the book of number. I think that is one of the 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 most important stories of this this staying on the desert, right? Uh, at least for me. Hello, Rodrigo and Ruth. Good to see you here. Good, Good morning, me. Fernando. Good morning, Shalom, Ed, and Felipe, and Jill, and Ruth. And I'm very happy to be here. And I'm ready to listen to you and to talk with you. Thank you very much. Good morning, Good. Hello. 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 <laughs> Hello. Hello. Uh, I'm very happy to be here, and uh, like, Ro like Rodrigo, I'm excited to hear what you have to tell us this morning. Thank you, Ruth. Thank you, Rodrigo, for coming here today. And Fernando, how shall we start? 
Eti, uh, could yeah. we uh, read the English text to, to, to open the Torah and to put everybody on the same page? Yes. Uh, on Numbers chapter 13. Yes. And that is on the white part. Yes. Is it clear? The text is clear to everyone? Ruth, do you see the text? Yes, I can see the text. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. So, I don't know if anyone uh, would like to read it. But yes, who's willing to read? Yes, thank you, Jill. Um, uh, how far down am I reading, Fernando? Excellent, you. Please. Uh, yeah. well, it, it is just uh, it seems a long chapter but but you're gonna see that the verses are are, are, are very okay so I'm just gonna read all of it okay and the Lord spoke unto Moses saying send thou men that they may spy out the land of Canaan which are given to the children of Israel of every tribe of their father shall ye send a man every one a prince among them and Moses sent them from the wilderness of Paran according to the commandment of the Lord, all of them men who were heads of the children of Israel. And these were their names, the tribe of Reuben, Shemoah, the son of Zachar, of the tribe of Simeon, Shaphat, the son of, of the tribe of Judah, Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, of the tribe of Issachar, Egel, the son of Joseph, the tribe of Ephraim, Hoshea, the son of Nun, of the tribe of Benjamin, Hatti, the son of Rastu, of the tribe of Zebulun, Gedil, the son of Sodi, of the tribe of Joseph, namely, of the tribe of Manasseh, Gadai, the son of Hushi, of the tribe of Dan, Amiel, the son of Gemeli, of the tribe of Asher, Sethar, the son of Michael, of the tribe of Naphtali, Nabi, the son of Bapshi, of the tribe of Gad, Guel, the son of Machi. These are the names of the men that Moses sent to spy out the land. And Moses called Hoshea, the son of Nun, jo Joshua. And Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan and said unto them, Get you up here into the south and go up into the mountains and see the land, what it is, and the people that dwelleth therein, whether they are strong or weak, whether they are few or many, and what the land is that they dwell in, whether it is good or bad, and what cities they are that they dwell in, whether in camps or in strongholds, and what the land is, whether it is fat or lean, whether there is wood therein or not, and be ye of good courage, and bring of the fruit of the land. Now the time was the time of the first ripe grapes. So they went up and spied out the land from the wilderness of Zin into Rehob at the entrance of Hamath. And they went up into the south and came unto Hebron and Haman, Sheshai, and Talmai, the children of Anak, were there. Were there. Now Hebron was built seven years before Zoan in Egypt. And they came unto the valley of Eshkol, and cut down from the from thence a branch, with a cluster, with one cluster of grapes, and they bore it upon a pole between two. They took also of the pomegranates and of the figs. The place was called the valley of Eshkol, because of the cluster which the children of Israel cut down from thence. And they returned from spying out the land at the end of forty days, and they went and came to Moses and Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel unto the wilderness of Paran to Kadesh and brought back word unto them and unto all the congregation and showed them fruit of the land. And they told him and said, We came unto the land whither thou sentest and surely it floweth with milk and honey and this is the fruit of it. Howbeit the people that dwell in the land are fierce and the cities are fortified and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. Amalek dwelleth in the land of the south, and the Hittite, and the Jebusite, and the Amorite, 
dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanite dwelleth by the sea, and along by the side of the Jordan. And Caleb stilled the people toward Moses and said, We should go up at once and possess it, for we are able, we are well able to overcome it. But the men that went up with them said, We are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they spread an evil report of the land which they had spied out unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have passed to spy it out is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. And there we saw the Nephilim, the son of Anak, who come, um, who come of the Nephilim. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. You want me to go ahead and read Genesis 42? It is, it is excellent. You, I do not have words to thank you enough. Thank you so much for okay. reading it. You're welcome. So, <laughs> please, please. I, oh, I didn't know if you wanted me to go ahead and read Genesis. <laughs> no, no, it's not necessary okay. now. Okay. After Thank we you. can read it. Thank you, Jill. Uh, it is interesting uh, what uh, I was reading on Isaac Luria and on the book of Sohar and talking with Rodrigo and Felipe and other friends uh, about this topic and we have uh, a lot of symbols here but I, I just want to put out some ideas that why this uh, attitude of the spies were so uh, damaging the, the, the people of Israel uh, the first the first that we have to point the p to pinpoint is about who were these spies right because they were the, the heads of Israel they were princes and I don't know but for me sometimes we think about the people that were uh, walking on the desert and they maybe were poor people or something but not these guys these 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 descendants from Jacob it seems that they were very wealthy and they they could command a lot of people this is what the book of Sohar speaks right and in the beginning of the the story the the lord god said to to them to to moses to to call man's anoshim to tour the land to tour the land right uh, and it put on this card some idea about what they had to do on this journey and why God asked him to tour the promised land. Uh, now, I, I think that this is the first topic that I would like to, to, to point. That is this, the following about the book of Sohar first. The book of Sohar speaks in this way. Didn't God knew the land to ask for the people to go there? Or even Moses, that was the great prophet, didn't he know? Didn't know what to expect in the land. Uh, according to the book of Sohar, both the Lord God and Moses already knew the land. They didn't need it to to put spies to to see what was going to happen on that land. But it seems that it was necessary to see if the people was ready to enter in the promised land. So they got uh, the head of the tribes, the 12 tribes, right? So we have 12 men going, 12 uh, princes going to, to see the land and to, to, to look what have there. And it is interesting that Moses, on verse 18 to 20, he speaks already what he wants to expect from these these princes because he he starts to speak like what you gonna see in the land the people are strong or weak they are few or many and the land is good or bad 
we can see a lot of binary here, you know, uh, good or bad, uh, strong or weak, uh, etc. But we have just one one thing that he asked in the singular. Uh, that is, if in the land there was a tree and not trees, right? Yes. Uh, here we have haish ba etz im ein or there is there a tree or nothing. Uh, so it, it's interesting. Uh, I, I think that we can talk a little bit about this first topic because uh, we can see very strongly the, the binary here. It was good or bad, strong or weak, fortified or not. Tree? Only a tree? Right? Yes. <laughs> Why one tree, right? And not yes. a lot of, a bunch of trees. Or ein, that is nothing, right? Mm -hmm. But it's impossible, like a land to not have a tree. And uh, and now just putting this idea is that actually Moses was asking to them, according to the book of Sohar, if they could see the tree of life, if they could enter in the land and see the beauty of the land, the, the, the unity. And, and what they saw, they come back right mm -hmm. and they start to speak oh it's great land it has mi have milk and honey the fruits are amazing but the people we're gonna kill us and uh, this is interesting because according to the book of Zohar what they were like concerned about is that in the land in the desert they were princes in the promised land <coughs> they, there will be no princes uh, everybody will be in unity you know there is not a hier hierarchical position of dominance so they they couldn't uh, pass the test let's say they, they was to it was expected them to to be humble and to to open a space to the, the nothingness, but they they just see the bad things. You know? mm -hmm. I don't know it if you want to say something about this first <laughs> topic. Yes, thank you so much for exposing it. It is beautiful the to Zohar about the question in verse twenty: Hayesh ba'etz? Is there a tree, a single tree in it? If none, if not, it's Weinreb says about AIDS, what is the value of AIDS? Let's, let us move into the whiteboard and try to open. What is the meaning of AIDS? How do we open AIDS? One second, I will increase here the, the ink. One second, that everybody will be able to see. Let's look into the structure of the word it's tree it's of it, Ain is 70, Tzadi is 90, together 160. 160, without a zero, because we say the zero is not a number, we are left with 16. What is the root of 16? Again. Or four so Moses was asking is there a tree in it meaning is there a four 
or time or development or none none is basically nothing or one none is nothing or one so what Moses was asking if they could see the <laughs> if they could see the four or the one if they could see the four of the one if they could see the none is if they could see the ein the none ein ein sof ein sof ein is ein sof infinite if they could see the none the ein sof they will inherit the country if not, if they see the four, if they see the tree, the 160, the time of devel and development, they will not inherit the country. And as Fernando mentioned, they were all like princesses. They had a good status in the desert. In the desert, in the world of duality, and this is not just a historical story. What is the desert? The desert Bamidbar is an even number. In the even number, we always have conflict between two poles. And when we have a conflict, like the sages says, there's always above, I mean, there's one person above, and there's one person below. This is the conflict. Of course, in the desert, in the space of conflict, they are like princes. But in the land, the promised land, everybody is what? Equally zero. A person who comes and lives in Israel, even as a tourist or as a, uh, as a resident, feels something very interesting. It doesn't matter where a person comes from, what is his uh, or her heritage, uh, what education, and so on, occupation, money, and so Everybody's here are equally zero. Everybody can feel it. Everybody worth nothing. This is an amazing place. Wow. And yes. Yes. It is amazing. Which I love it, this idea of the root of the tree. Mm -hmm. Because the root of the tree, you know, it's the root of the tree, is the principle of the tree. It's, it's yeah. what it means. So I, I love it. And, and it, it makes me think about one uh, math approach that in the beginning of the verse, the very first verse, Shelach mm -hmm. Lecha, uh, yes. send for you, send for you, yes. Anoshim, Anoshim, right, yes. man's. Yes. And then Anoshim, Anoshim, uh, if we make the gematria of Anoshim, man's, that was, were meant to be sent yes. this mission, the, the gematria of Anoshim is 401. So, uh, you know, the, the expectation was, can we have men that can bring to the far to the one, you know, to the mm. unity, to, to be... It was already, if we look at the numbers and not only the words, it, it, it seems that was this idea, you know, come back to unity. And they stand 40 days in the promised land, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, so it was like the the complete time, the complete time. They could see everything in 40 days, right? So it is mm -hmm. like uh, like the time of the eternity, like Vine Rap says. Yes. Speaks, yes. you know. Yes. It is our time here, <laughs> you know. Yes, yes. A and two things just to add that is to mm -hmm. the idea. Uh, one is that they were meant to tour the land, right? Uh, yes. The, the word in Hebrew is le tour. Yes. Uh, right? Yes, le tour. Yes, we shall write it here. We shall move to the empty space. Yes, le tour is to tour. It's the same, it's the same uh, verb in English. La tour, it comes from Hebrew. La tour, to tour, la tour, yes. Right. Yes. <coughs> this was 
me to, they, they were meant to, to make. And it makes me remember about the story of Shelton that he brought to us last week, mm -hmm. that he was touring, I think that was one city on Africa or something. Yes, yes. And the people serve him fish that he speaks that was the the most wonderful fish that he ate. Mm. This is the touring, you know, when you go to make a tourism in other land, you you usually, a tourist, see the bright side, yes. see the beautiful thing. But the people that live in the land, like, like in the story of Shel Shelton's story, uh, tend to think that the it, that was a common fish, it was nothing at all, it was like the poorest thing, but it was not poorest at all, it was the greatest thing for the tourist, you know. Yes. And this is our life here, it, maybe we are sent as a tourist to this land, you know, to mm. see the beauty and to see the, the unity, but we act like the princes, you know. Uh, I am complaining about the weather, or I am complaining about the, the, the fellows that I have, or I don't know, the problems of my country. Brazil is a poor country, we see a lot of, of problems here, but uh, if, we, if we look at as a tourist, because we are not from here, as Jill said in the last class, mm -hmm. you know, we are from another plan we could see the beautiful things maybe just an idea yes it is like Jill said and I agree if yes if we could see ourselves like having a, a tour here that our life is just a, a little journey here and this is what the soul experience so it's it's beautiful but if we think that we are owning something here and then then we very, we have complaints i mean then we complain about things if we see the world as the princes uh, saw it they they feel that they deserve something so there is a lot of complaint but if we feel we deserve nothing and still we able to see and to hear and to experience life on earth this is a different story so this is very very interesting it is not about this is not so much historical story like you say it's about our perspective so how do we perceive things If we perceive ourselves as prince and princesses, everything, I deserve everything, of course there will be complaint, nothing will be uh, satisfied, nothing be, will be enough or in the right place or in the right measure. But if we see ourselves not as uh, deserve anything or it's a miracle here that like a uh, few uh, I would say tissues coming together and from these tissues or cells becomes a person or a human being that able to speak and this is a miracle that we are here. It is a miracle. So it depends uh, and we are all the time during the day we are moving between those modes. Sometimes we feel that we are worthy so we complain everything can be improved and sometimes same moments we feel that we deserve nothing and this is the real this is the those are the greatest moment this is because when we notice that we are nothing and still we can speak and uh, converse and experience life on earth this is this is the present yes and it's interesting, I think, following this idea, we can speak about what Luria speaks about yes. this episode. Yes. Uh, just to, because look, look how beautiful it is. 
the book of Sohar it is interesting because the book of Sohar starts uh, speaking <laughs> it, it is not all, it is never direct the book of Sohar it is always parallel and talking about other subject that you I, I usually think what does this have to do with this you know mm -hmm. and the book of Sohar starts this chapter speaking about the uh, the following uh, have you ever awake the dawn mm -hmm. no and he he starts to to speak that when we are at night the the power of the left side take, took place and we lost consciousness and everything but after he speaks about moses and he speaks that the dawn the the sun is related to moses is related yes. to zer zer and pin mm -hmm. the the invisible, right, to mm -hmm. what is beyond material, and and I'm tr going to to what Luria speaks. It make it will make it more clear. Luria speaks. Hafiza Luria speaks that these twelve spies are a kind of reincarnation of the twelve sons of Jacob. Uh, he, sp he starts speaking about this verse on Genesis that I put on, on the table just a little uh, up, up. When Joseph fi found, he found his brothers on Genesis 42 and speaks to them asking, You are spies to see the nakedness of the land you are come. Uh, he says that they are spies and Luria speaks that Joseph already saw what was going to happen on the desert and and when they were called to make this mission it seems that the souls of the, the sons of Jacob came to them but following what Luria speaks it was not sufficient to make them not seen it was it is something like this when they start the mission they were they were with uh, Ruach Hokodesh or with a divine spirit blessing them. But as soon as they uh, tend to make something for themselves, this divine spark just left them, and they were in the dark. They were not with the sun, with Moses, with the tree of life. They were alone in Mal Malhut. Mm -hmm. The only exception was Caleb, right, mm -hmm. and Yehoshua. Yes. And and Luria speaks why. He speaks that Caleb, uh, when b before he was going to spy the, the land, he went to the tomb of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and make a prey, asking for, asking for uh, support, you know. And Yoshua, his first name was Hosea, and he received from Moses the letter Yod, he and and his name became Yehoshua, uh, saved from from God. Me. Yes. So he starts to play with these two names, and we have a lot of secrets, right? Yes. In these two names, but what I would like to ask you at the end to bring to the conversation it's about this divine assistance that that Luria called Ibur mm -hmm. that is temporary you know it is something that is given to us for a certain time or to make a task or to make something mm -hmm. but if you do not awake the dawn if you are not linked with the tree of life this is part just just go away, it seems. Mm -hmm. So I'm just bringing here for the friends and what do you think and mm -hmm. and to understand better this this idea. It is beautiful the the exposition. This is what Luia says, and here we can see this is how he reads the text. The text says, "A man ish echad." In verse 2, איש אחד, איש אחד, למטה אבותיו. The English says, it is a bit, um, 
it's a bit different yes a man a man but Luya reads Ishad Ishad one man one man to his uh, to his let's say the, the unity of his fathers he reads this in the way that you have shown us Ishad like Moses sent 12 men so to speak in his time life but in each and every man that Moses sent original son of Jacob was incarnated in do we understand this concept Jill was reading for us the name and the whole chapter let us look please in, in verse 4 in Hebrew and those on these are the names to the tribe of Reuven Shamua ben Zahu. So Luria says that to the tribe of Reuven Shamua ben Zahu, Shamua ben Zahu is the man that Moses sent. But Lemate Reuven to the tribe of Reuben, it means that the soul of Reuben was reincarnated in his descendant. Shamua ben Zahu. Do we understand this concept? Yes. Yes. So this is why the Torah, in a way, writes the names of the twelve tribes, the twelve uh, sons of Jacob, and their descendants. Now you ask about the reincarnation and what Luria's perspective is. Luria says that the aim of Moses to send those spies to the land was not to testify as you opened in the beginning of the conversation if the country is good or not. But the aim of Moses sending the 12 tribes was to correct the, se the, the sin of s selling Joseph. Again, the aim of Moses sending the 12 tribes to tour the land of Cana was to enable them to correct their primordial sin of selling Joseph to the Egyptians or to the merchant. It's a completely different motivation. It is interesting, I think, because I can remember that Ludi speaks that the only one that was that repent was Yehuda, right? Yes. And yes. this is why Kalev yes. was was uh, the, from the tribe of Yehuda that and that knew that he was not from himself. He went to to pray for Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yes. And his name already have the name of God because Kalev gives 52 Two. and 52 is the name of the is the name of the the Havaya in Malchut right yes yes and the other one uh, Hosea was already from the tribe from it was it was from Joseph he didn't he did not sell uh, Joseph because he is his son from Ephraim right? yes 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 the book of Zohar says something very interesting that his name originally was Hosea f with four letters and Moses while appointing him and sending him to the land he added him another letter Yod from that the Yod is basically the Yod from the tribe of Levi because Moses Moses is the son of Levi Levi has three letters, Lamed, Vav, and Yod. And the completion is Yod. 
the this is the letter of the covenant and Moses gave his student Hosea the letter of his teacher because Moses is from the tribe of Levi is the teacher gave his disciple or his student the letter of the teacher the your the completion the full perspective and with with the power or with the potential that Hosea received from his teacher Moses he could speak the truth or as you or as the book of Zohar mentioned in you Fernando that Yoshua is from the tribe of Ephraim Ephraim has the letter Ephraim again has the letter Yod like his father Joseph Ephraim has the letter Yod like Joseph the Yod of the covenant so we see here Yod 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 and they could say the truth all the rest mm -hmm. yes 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 please and he was Ben Nun as well right yes son of so Nun. Nun we know that he's Bina he is yes. the supernal school son of Nun yes son of the 50 because yes Nun the letter Nun has the value of 50 in Gematria the son of Bina in understanding beyond time and space or Lebanon yes excellent so they could say the truth and the ten the ten who could not uh, speak uh, the truth they they could not correct their their sin of j selling Joseph they could not there is something in it interesting in all of this story because the story repeats also later in time we have a similar picture it is quite uh, I'm, I'm not sure it's the right place to speak about this because this is a uh, New Testament uh, the Jesus disciples the 12 disciples this is also connect to the story appears in a different it is, is like a f uh, <laughs> how do you say blueprint of the soul the story appears in Rabbi Akiva's time and in Jesus time and in with his disciples it's the same pattern that repeats I'm not sure it's the right place to speak about Jesus disciples Please, yeah. yes. <laughs> it, 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 I'm not it, sure it, it's it, the it, <laughs> yeah. oh, it's yeah. interesting w one thing just to, to make this parallel mm -hmm. right that you are making one interesting fact is that when they came back to Moses, the mm -hmm. twelve spies, they repent. They mm -hmm. they see they they could saw what what they made. Be why was that? Because Moses was near, you know. So uh, they were back to the tree of life. And when you are back to the consciousness, you can see your mistakes. Mm -hmm. right? So they repent, but it was not uh, sufficient for to to correct what they made. And the story of Jesus, it happens the same, you know, because when he was crucified, uh, he was denied, mm -hmm. you know. And this is what the Book of Sohar is, is speaking about, that we when we are disconnected. Uh, it makes me remember what you po posted on Discord some days ago about Ashlag as well. Mm -hmm. That Ashlag speaks that we have a, a, like a, a bill in our pocket, you know, mm. that we need, that is like a call to connection. It is something that please remember where you are from and remember this connection that Caleb and Yosea, Yoshua did in this this passage you know mm -hmm. they stayed connected every time they were in the recruit maybe mm -hmm. but when uh, when the others are away from moses or away from jesus they start to to be disconnected you know mm -hmm. to be alone in the dark 
just one idea Eti. I don't know if it was what you wanted to speak but please continue thank you it is beautiful what you're saying and uh, the story of the Ibu of conceivement that Caleb and uh, Yoshua were conceived like with a high spirit that Caleb was conceived with the spirit of J Judah and Yoshua was conceived so to speak with the spirit of Moses what does it mean to be conceived I would like to open this because you asked this question on Slack not on Slack but on Discord because for me it's like one great library of wisdom maybe Ruth uh, could go uh, Ruth I don't think that you visited Slack we have an archive there maybe you could it's good if I shall send you an invitation and you could log into our library there this um, is yes if, yes if you yes. do that I will thank you Thank you. What does it mean to be conceived? This is just a little offering because there are many ways to see Ibu, Fernando. There are many ways. One of them I was thinking about. What does it mean? One of them is to be here. You know, to, there's one way to see it. What does it mean to be conceived with a spirit or with a soul? You ask me on Slack. And you ask me if we can recognize a situation in life in which we noticed that we are conceived. Is that right, the way I read your question? Yes. yes. What does it mean to be conceived with another soul? This is an open question. Before I'll try to answer it, Rodrigo, Felipe, Jill, what does it mean when it comes to you when you hear it the first time what does it mean to be conceived with a soul with a spirit from what hunch your hunch is telling you rodrigo what does it mean to be conceived with a soul felipe yes rodrigo can I just make an attempt <laughs> um, it, it reminds me of when you said that we're all here and we're playing a role yes and um, and so it seemed like um, like say for instance in my family um, we might see like the same pattern that um, um, reoccurs like maybe something that's happened in the past and then like they'll see it again like in me or I see it in my grandkids so I just kind of see it as something maybe that is reoccurring maybe inside of a family but that's you know just my thought mm -hmm. thank you thank you what a, this is a this is interesting observation what does it mean to be conceived with a soul Yes. Maybe, maybe yes. is to be connected with the tree of life. Uh, yes, yes. Because it, it came to me one insight that is, we know that the tree of life has three pillars, right? Yes. The left that is related with judgment, the right that is related with mercy, and the central pillar that is like a connection. Uh, mm -hmm. we fall uh, mm -hmm. and when we are connected to the tree of life mm -hmm. we are it it is an idea please correct me Eti, but we are like we put receive the two sides you know we could receive the 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 judgment or the mercy right mm -hmm. and or we receive both at the same time and and our job is like to refrain judgment or to conjugate the both or to just to leave what it is but what you just said it's interesting because when we connected the th things tend to repeat 
because we need to to correct aspects maybe and so the the, the left side came as well it is not so it is not only the the right side you know it is not only the right side you connect with the tree of life and it seems that you receive assistance but on the other hand you have to make a correction as well mm -hmm. i know that is it's cloudy for me it's cloudy and in english it's even more but it is this idea that the things tend to repeat just like in this story you know it is an opportunity to correction mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, when we look at the letters, Ibu, it is very good because you say repetition and also Jill mentioned that she's so right, like uh, recurring patterns of behavior. So when we look at the word Ibu, Ibu, in four letters, Ibu, we have Avar, which is past. This is one way to read Avar is past. And the letter Vav, plus the letter Vav, or plus the six so the connecting valve past plus an opportunity to change the six the spirit this is one way this there are infinite ways to look at it avar or lavo to pass to pass there is a, a a way to pass through the ibu but this is just looking at the letters i will i will like to ask you a general question when you listen to a music that you like or you read a poem or we are doing like a daily task and while doing something we remember something comes to our mind as a memory of a poem as a memory of an artist we see a painting we remember a painting let's say we we are being reminded of a painting of Van Gogh for instance this remembrance oh we hear a song by let's say Paul Simon and we remember the lyrics and then we move in our mind into another realm what does it mean how do we call all of those moments that we remember a scene in which somebody was saying something to another person and we were in this place or we remember a tree moving in the wind or we remember a text let's say we yeah. read yes we read a, a story beautiful literature and we do something even in the garden and suddenly we, we recall or we remember the text or how do we call all of those moments? So it is interesting that the Hebrew sages speaks uh, speak about Ibu. They speak about Ibu as People might say uh, reincarnation, but it's a spirit that moves and brings with it sometimes notes, sometimes images, sometimes speech bubbles, ideas. Do, do we understand? Yes? yes. Yes. It is beautiful. It is. So it is uh, a bit problematic if we translate it into English like reincarnation because karna is in flesh, yes, karna. Mm -hmm. So it is not uh, about this, but we could look, let's say, a, let's say a painting. We could think this is a manifested because painting we see there are different colors and it's a manifested, I would say. So, when a person is reincarnated, as the Zohar says, with the spirit of someone, it means that he is connected to this one because they're sharing the same idea. Is it clear? Does, does it make any sense? Yes. 
Yes, yes, the unification. Very good, very good. It is, this is it. This is it. It is interesting because sometimes when we receive these memories, it is not memories, it is something beyond memories. Yes, yes. Uh, it is very present, you know. Yes. Um, it is something we could... Um, yesterday I was talking with Felipe at night and we are listening to some songs together. And uh, a little play that we made last year uh, from a psalm that I, I mm -hmm. sent you. And it was felt like it was yesterday, you know, it was felt like uh, we are like listening for the first time. It was not something that was in time and space, you know, it was mm -hmm. sometimes we feel like this. It's, it, uh, it's difficult to, to explain, but but, uh, but I could understand what you were, were saying that that when we are in this, this kind of state is something like that we have this this Yehud, this divine soul or, or this this connection. Yes, yes. May I ask you please a general question? Is it possible? And everybody's uh, can answer if they wish about uh, the question. Uh, this is a general because uh, slowly we shifted from. And thank you, Fernando, for this beautiful presentation. I did not no. say thank you enough. Uh, I will attend this in one moment, but it comes to me because you you mentioned uh, the song that uh, you were listening last night, the psalms. And the question is now when we shifted, not to have. Uh, at the, how do you say every day a session when there are more pausa uh, more space between those presentations and music is coming and Felipe and Fernando are presenting how does it how does it feel to you how do you sense all of this how how do you move in these new waters I would say how is it May I say something? Yes, Felipe, yes. It's, uh, uh, it's just, uh, I want to, to answer this question with something that came into my mind uh, last week, two weeks, I, I guess. And it was when we were thinking about you interview. And it, I remembered this great film and this movie, uh, Forrest Gump. It's mm -hmm. well known. And uh, what came into my mind, and it was about uh, everything that we are doing here, it was that scene when Forrest starts to run. If he wants to run, he wants to, to start something. And he just starts to run. And suddenly, people were interested in what <laughs> he, he's doing, and they begin to follow him. And they follow him, and <laughs> they start like seeing him as a guru or like great master, great sage. And they are just happy to follow him. They follow him a long time. <laughs> his beard, his beard is growing. Time is passing. People are engaging. There is much, much more people following him. And suddenly, he just stops, and people are astonished and asking why, why did, why do you stop? Why, why did you suddenly change? change your your mind and i i guess the answer is i i'm i'm tired but the point is this is an incredible for me it's really incredible because 
I was thinking about this. When you start something, you may create expect, expect, expectation, expectations, expectative uh, mm -hmm. from people. But actually, you know, you may just want to change your mind. You just, you know, mm -hmm. people see you as a, a kind of a master of or guru or something like this. And I'm I'm not not saying about you specific, uh, but uh, what I'm trying to say is that uh, I learned something about just doing something, you know, taking part, taking a, a, a active participation. And in these moments that you, I mean. Uh, I, for me, it's a, it's a great uh, learning to you know to to see that you are uh, giving us uh, like an opportunity, gentle uh, opportunity to uh, to run for ourselves, you know, and, mm -hmm. and just participate in the, in the in the whole story. But this this metaphor, this image. It's so beautiful, I guess it's profound, and th that's it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Rodrigo? Yes? I cannot hear you, Rodrigo. Maybe the microphone is not connected. Fernando? Yes, it's here. I appreciate what Felipe is saying, and it is beautiful. It is. Uh, you know, like the princess in the promised land. <laughs> it is like. Uh, Changing states, you know, changing. Some, but it's not nothing is permanent, you know. It is yes. uh, changing states because it is not so hierarchical, like Felipe was saying, and and the story meant here to say that it, that we are all a unity, and if we are here now, maybe Eti, Felipe, Ruth, Gil, Rodrigo, and Venus that I'm happy to see here as well. Uh, they, we are all part of a unity. Yes. You know? uh, yes. So it is like birds flying, you know. Sometimes yes. Change the position. Yes. 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 This is it. <laughs> right. Yes. 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 This is so so beautiful. So beautiful. Thank you so much for this beautiful presentation. Eti, I have one question that yes. I wish to, 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 to let for the next, maybe one day you could answer me, but since I was reading the book of Sohar and, and it speaks that Moses is the son, it's related with the son because it's related with Tiferet, it's related with the Zerampin in this context, right? Yes. And we know that Israel, the promised land, is related with Malhut, right? And you know, Moses couldn't enter in the promised land. The sun couldn't enter in Yericho, that is the the, the symbol of the moon, True. right? Yes. In that time. Yes. So, it is difficult. For, for, on one hand, I see that, you know, Moses didn't enter in the, the promised land because he is the son. He, yes. He is in another plan. He, 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 it was not for him. The promised land is for, for us. You know, it, it is for the, the people that are in Malhut or the, the, the Ben Israel. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I'm just wondering it because about this marriage, it seems that in this story it didn't happen, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I don't know. 
I, I don't know if I'm following the right track, but I'm just just thinking about this in abstract way, you know. Not like a person, but in this story, it seems that Moses, the the Zerampin, couldn't reach Alhut, couldn't reach Jericho, Jerusalem. Oh. <laughs> this is interesting question, and, and maybe I can answer it in a non-linear, non-linear way. The Book of Zohar says that Israel, Israel, just Israel, is one second. Is the name that we Israel is one second. I'm writing and speaking at the same time, and Israel is the former name of Jacob. But Eretz Israel, the land of Israel, Eretz Israel, it's the marriage between Jacob and Rachel. Did I answer your question, Fernando? Or not really? Yes, it. No, no, no. It is on the path. But I'm just wondering why Moses couldn't, you know, make this marriage. The, the generation of Moses, so to speak, is named Dor de A. Dor de A because their. Dor de A, it comes from opinion or they had the highest recognition those who are not little people like you mentioned in the beginning of the presentation there's according to philon this is a generation and speci uh, specifically moses is the highest recognition that human being can have this is a full recognition of a human being as very close or almost assimil assimilate with the divine wisdom and you ask why Moses is not entering the promised land this is the question yes, yes. Mm -hmm. here's the promised land the promised land is maybe symbolized by Yericho or the city of the moon and Moses is here in the east side of the Jordan Kedem 144 Adam human yes to enter the promised land with Joshua a person need to step down from his height this is why the entering of the promised land is considering of crossing the Jordan. Yerden, we say in English Jordan. In Hebrew, Yerden, from Laredet, Yarad. Every person who comes to live in Israel, now it doesn't matter specifically from the West, Europe, North America, South, South America, when he comes to live here, this is descending in the, the, there's arriving here. It means to descend uh, your highest uh, or your former position in life. In a way, this is the, the place of the moon. The moon is the lesser light. If people are willing to lower their former status, they will enter the promised land do you understand this kind of thinking yes moses has a very high recognition like a son he is an unconditional one 
But and this is w- this is the speech of uh, Joshua, Yeshua, w- the moment before they're crossing the Jordan. The Lord says that if you don't accept, and they were standing at the Jordan, and the water v- were very high because it's like uh, spring time. This is Nisan, April, when the snow is melting and the water are moving very fast and very high. Somebody can drown if he tries to cross the Jordan. And Joshua was saying, if you don't receive upon yourself the hidden, what does it mean to receive upon the heart the hidden? To be little like a moon, not to know everything. If you don't receive upon your heart the hidden ways of God, the water will come and wash you. Only when they agreed to Joshua to receive the hidden, to be little, equally zero, they could cross the Jordan. If you remember, and we remember, Fernando, it's a very good question. At the situation of the burning bush, conversation in the burning bush, God is asking Moses to remove his shoes from his feet. Do you remember this line? Yes. Yes. The sages are saying, what does it mean to remove the shoes from your feet? It means to live beyond marriage. Like he lives, he, the sages are saying that in those words, he was removed from his wife Zipporah. He sent her to her father with uh, both children. With those words, remove your shoes from your feet because the ground you're sta- standing on is a holy ground. The sages are saying that Moses was requested to leave his wife and to devote his life for the mission of rescu- rescuing Israel from Egypt. And she was sent to her father. And the Bible says, Achar Shilucheha. After Moses relieved her from marriage life, she returns to her father, Jethro. And Moses, in a way, is standing as devoted to the whole subconscious of Israel as his wife. And this is what Miriam is, in a way, and Aaron are asking why Moses uh, was asked to leave uh, his wife and we are still marrying and serving God marrying uh, still married and serving God while Moses has to leave his wife and serve God this is the complaint and then uh, Miriam is getting uh, this uh, laparos tzarat because she speaks bad words about Moses do you understand because this is not a direct answer I think Venus, uh, is yes, Venus yes. Uh, wrote before, but I, I do not see now. But yes, but it was like uh, Moses is standing with the spirit, uh, with the, the higher, with the, yes, yes, with the Ein that he was searching for, maybe. With the yes, yes. Moshe Hashem. Yeah, Moshe is the same letters as Hashem. Hashem is the name, is the recognition, and. In a way, the recognition of the higher does not demand, so to speak, flesh. This is why he was asked to remove from Tsipoa. There is no need. But entering the promised land, and this is Jericho, the city of the moon, and to enter, to enter the, the promised land, there is a need. There is a need of marriage. This is a very, uh, very, very complex topic. The question is excellent. This is a very uh, complex topic to answer. But we cannot penetrate uh, the answer uh, at once. Why, Fernando? What happens when we're trying to climb a high mountain? If we, what happens? <laughs> What, babe? I what? don't know. It's because uh, I, do, I, I think that we can't. It is just. So uh, there is a way. To, yes, there is a yeah, way yeah. to climb a mountain. What do you do? You go up and then Circulate. down. Yes, yes yeah, yeah, like yeah. this. Slowly and slowly. This is 
up and down this it's called to stitch the mountain and this is in a way a safe um a safe way uh to uh how you say to adapt to the height to the height of the mountain because if people climb at once the oxygen become very thin and uh, people are not uh, but it's a very 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 good question very good question the book of zohar deals uh with this question to the length and to the width meaning the face of moses is like the sun the face of joshua is like the moon and the time of uh, the sun comes to set this is why moses is removed from the scene and this is the time of the moon to rise and this is why joshua comes and enter israel into the promised land yes uh, just one thing that uh, it's interesting that joshua enters uh, the army should uh, go circle circling uh, yes jericho as as the climb of the mountain yes it's interesting to approach the center you have to go in by and by yes excellent it, it was beautiful really beautiful and just have to thank you so much for the answer thank you really thank you just another thing that came into me when you were asking about the spies miraglim miraglim we are writing in hebrew like this miraglim and we have here one second we have two words we have regel regel is 223 like the tree of life tree of life and here we have mine water just to think about it the tree of life in time yes the tree of life in time this is the spies uh, perspective yes they could not speak the truth thank you so much fernando for your beautiful <laughs> presentation it's amazing ama thank you. I amazing thank you and i thank you for, for the patience and, and for everything and thank, thank you thank you so much Gilles. Thank you, Fernando. It was awesome. It was amazing. Thank you. Thank you, Jill. Thank you, Rodrigo. Thank you, Ruth and Venus here. Thank you so much. And on Monday, we shall start reading the, the book of Weinreb. And Fernando and Felipe, would you like to participate in a musical pause? Would you like to present one of your songs? during the reading in front of the reading or after the reading would you like to do that Felipe is the maestro you know <laughs> no no yes i i we are we are thinking about what we we could um, play in this session at the end if we could uh, play um, online or we if we have to be uh, uh, present both of us but yes we, we will make some music I think, I'm sure so it depends I, I for me it's open if you feel to play online we could uh, do a, a sound test before the, sh the session starts to see if the guitars are streaming if if you like to play alive or you would like to record it it's it, how much uh, how would you like to have it so and I, I guess we we could make a test it before yeah. yes and so th so we could uh, arrange the, the 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 volumes and so okay yes to be so this is wonderful thank you so much thank I, i would like to wish you a wonderful week and happy holiday saint john holiday and uh, summer vacation to the north hemisphere and happy uh, st john holiday uh, wherever you celebrate it thank you so much 
Thank you so Thank much. You. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Thank, Thank you, Fernando. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ruz. Jill. Thank you, Ati. Shalom, shalom. Shalom, Bye. shalom. Shalom. Shalom, Venus. Shalom, Michelle. Shalom, shalom.